Salutations, greetings, and many great hellos. This is Cottonmouth255, the Spore Serpent, and I'm back with more Monster Hunter Generations. Last time, I completed the quests in both Burna and Kokodo, and now I'm ready to continue on with quests from Pocky and Yukimo. However, I want to get something out of the way first, and that is directly tied to my apparent uh, transformation here. Yeah, as you can see, I've lost a good deal of weight, and uh, now have shrimpy little arms and legs and a tail. Uh, the fact is, this is actually my Palico Graham. I'm playing as him in the Prowler mode. I've also decked him out in uh, Macau gear, because why not? Uh, there are a couple of quests I want to complete as the Palico, or the Prowler, sorry. If I get those two mixed up, then it doesn't really matter because they're both kind of the same thing. But anyway, yeah, there are a couple of quests I want to clear as this guy. One is a Palico exclusive quest in the village, and the other is a request from the Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Street Cook that I can complete, or that, that, that I can access here in the wonderful Hunter's Hub. So uh, yeah, this is actually our first time taking a look at the Hunter's Hub. If I eventually decide to do online stuff for the benefit of you viewers, then uh, you will be seeing quite a bit more of this place. But this is our first little, little uh, glimpse of it. So in order to initiate the quest, I have to go all the way over here to the um, Academy Gal. Uh, okay, we're only on one star quest so far, but the quest here is... Ingredient Hunter, deliver 20 tropical berries as well as 3 Piscine livers. I can see the desire in your eyes, the desire for new ingredients, Meow. If you procure some tropical berries for me, I'll paw over some of my special ingredients. This is obviously from the street cook, as I mentioned. Now, 20 tropical berries. I've had troubles with this quest in the past. Uh, I think I can... You know what? I'll um, get rid of the raw meat, and uh, we'll head on. But I've had trouble with this quest in the past, mostly because it, I just find it very difficult to get 20 tropical berries. Even though tropical berries can be found in practically every area of the, uh, of the dunes, it's very difficult to find them. So, um, I mean, that quest where I had to only deliver 5 of them, that was no problem at all. But the fact that I have to get 20 now, is, it, it's just, it is a serious problem. Um... Let's just take two cool drinks as well as the map here. I mean, this is a great opportunity to stock up on cool drinks because this is, um... I mean, as the Prowler, you don't need cool drinks or hot drinks for that matter. And, I mean, this is an online quest, so the, the quest itself gives you a ton of um, supplies in the supply box. It's intended for four players, but, uh, you know, if you do it solo, then you can fully exploit this. Anyway, I think we should begin our search. We need 20 of these tropical ferns. They can be gathered from these little gathering spots right here. These uh, cacti with red flowers. These grow all over the desert, so you're sure to find a ton of them. But in my experience, only a select few actually deliver um, the tropical berries. Uh, is there anything else growing over here? Uh, there's one right there. Uh, I think you can also find tropical berries from actual berry gathering spots, like they're um, small pink coconut-like things that you can see on the ground and sometimes you can get tropical berries from them. Usually though, it's just stuff like um, null berries and paint berries and whatnot, useless stuff that I'm probably never going to use. Oh yeah, you should also be careful, um, some of these spots only give, um, ambrosia and, uh, jelly and stuff. Stuff for, uh, upgrading your, uh, kinsect, if you, if you decide to use the insect glaive. I'm also going to take this opportunity as the prowler to do some mining, because, uh, as the prowler you actually have unlimited bug nets and pickaxes, which is extremely convenient. Now, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want to go on a gathering quest, then please go ahead, take the Prowler. 
and you will have uh, a, fu a full advantage. And uh, okay, we're going through this uh, stuff again. The Iopre in the desert. Say hi, Iopre. That was just rude. Yeah, see, just regular um, bomb berries and stuff like that. But yeah, sometimes you do get um, tropical berries from these spots. Sometimes. And uh, no tropical bo- oh, not tropical bones. No fossilized bones. Okay, you frickin' Iopri, stop. This spot should give uh, tropical berries. I I've gotten some in the past. There we go, tropical berries. Oh my god, if this keeps up... You know, I'm actually gonna leave the area. And I completely forgot to do... To equip a healing skill. I am a, I am a total idiot. I, uh, I apologize. I think I'm gonna die of poison here, actually. Because Palicos can't use items uh, regularly. They have to... Um, you have to equip certain skills to them in order for them to be any sort of use. Okay, the poison stopped. I'm actually going to head over to base camp and heal in the bed. Yeah, if you're a prowler, just end on gathering quests and be very careful because the minions are a lot more threatening without um, a sturdy set of uh, hunter's armor. No, in your... Um, frail little palico armor, it's not going to be protecting you all that much. So yeah, just be careful of the minions if you're playing as the Prowler. And those Iopre, I swear they're the worst of the bunch. Because you can't use antidotes, and they do a lot of damage with those poison spitting attacks. I still don't know why these things are in the freaking desert. Hopefully I can finish gathering real quick. And unfortunately, I don't have another Palico to uh, distract these idiots. Okay, so a full set of tropical berries and a healthy dose of poison for good measure. Okay, so how many tropical berries do I have so far? Uh, more than five, I think. Uh, yeah, I actually got five. So I need 15 more. Absaros, don't you even dare. Okay, so this isn't a c the correct spot. It's just, it's just giving me kinsect stuff. Yep. You're um, you're very intimidating, Absaros. That way you um, slowly and obnoxiously stalk towards us without really doing anything. It's, it's very intimidating. I, I'm shaking in my boots here. And that other guy is following me? Hmm. Absaros are persistent, I'll give them that. And this is rotten fish, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, he's, he's actually ignoring me now. Huh. Okay, so that wasn't any uh, sort of use. Uh, you're not ignoring me, though. Uh, let's head to five real fast. Maybe there will be something. Mushroom spot. Uh, mining spot, I'll take advantage of that. And hey, there's actually Genprey in here, like a normal Dune's quest. Just, come on, I I'll pray. Just, I, I can't get over how random that is. It's like, yeah, we'll just throw I'll pray in the Dunes. Why don't we put uh, Laranoth in the frozen seaway too, just because we can. Okay, not much here. This might uh, take a while. So, um... I feel like I should uh, pass the time by talking about something. Because, um... I mean, it's, it's just a tropical berries quest. It's gonna take a long time. And uh, there's not much there is to say about gathering. So, uh, yeah, what, sh what should I talk about? I'm, uh, and asking you viewers is 
completely redundant and uh, it's not going to do me any good. But uh, I don't know. If you're watching these videos, I kind of feel the need to involve you in some way. So, uh, okay. Um, okay, fun fact. This game actually has all of the flagship monsters in the series aside from Azure Athelos. And what I mean by flagship monsters are monsters that um, are featured on the cover of various games. So, for example, um, um, Rathalos, he was on the original game. And I'm going to kill these uh, Cephalos because uh, they have to give me those livers. Uh, so, yeah, Rathalos for the original game, Nargakuga from Freedom Unite, Brachydios from uh, 3 Ultimate. Yeah, I know Brachydios wasn't on the English version of the game, but he um, there, uh, he was on the Japanese version. Oh wait, that's Cephadrome! Okay, uh, quickly, quickly gather here. Maybe there will be some tropical berries. Nope. Well, I can't kill you guys with Cephadrome in the area, so I'm going to make like a tree and leaf. Anyway, yeah, back to what I was saying earlier about, uh, yeah, all the, uh, flagships are in this game, except for Azurathlos, because no subspecies. I'm kinda glad, uh, no subspecies, though. I'm glad, uh, kinda glad they went with that. Because it gives them, uh, more freedom to include, uh, original monsters. It's kinda neat how they did that, because this, I mean, the name Monster Hunter Generations kind of implies that, uh, all the generations of Monster Hunter are being uh, collected here into this one game. And I think they did a really good job with representing that. Like, uh, four is a very prominent theme in this game. You got uh, four villages, four uh, main monsters, the Elite Four. Um, yeah, four, yeah, definitely a common theme here. And um, it's, it's all due to the fact that there are four generations of Monster Hunter. And... Um, I guess, including all of the flagships featured in the series is a good way of uh, kind of... Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a good way to help uh, sell that theme of bringing everything together. Um, if you... If, for some weird reason, you don't believe me when I say this, you can check out the third Japanese trailer for uh, Monster Hunter Cross, which is what this game is called in Japan. Um, yes, there is, um, th there is a, a little montage at the beginning of uh, hunters using various hunter arts against monsters, and these monsters are all the flagships. They show off Rathalos, um, Nargakuga, Tigrex... Kushala Daura, Seregios, Gormagala, 